uh, for that. Um, let me attempt uh, most of the questions and concerns raised. The first issue of delay, I think in the initial comments made by our uh, father, uh, Professor Kalai, he talked about you know, not getting the results within a specific number of hours. Yes, it is true, and uh, we cannot claim that the laboratory is also as optimal as we should have it. We have our challenges, and I think this is also for another day. Mm. We are part of what we have in the country, even though we believe that in the context of what is happening, we are trying our best, but that is far from what you can say is supposed to be the international standard. That is far, far away from that. Ordinarily, there is supposed to be a follow-up, you know, by the doctors in the lab on every patient that, you know, requires a review. But we don't have enough to do that. And that's why sometimes we tend to, you know, avoid that. This is something we keep discussing when you have, like, only two, three doctors. Ordinarily, every day, once the result come from the benches, we are supposed to review them and mark those ones that need you know, further follow-up in the ward and also make some comments those ones that are outpatients and also liars with the requesting clinicians. In that regard, in that way, some that are a bit critical don't even need to wait for the 48 hours. There are some that you're supposed to you know, alert the clinician or the physician as soon as you have a certain finding. We try our best, but we know that this is not as uh, we would want to, to have it. However, we will keep improving as we have more and more uh, people joining us. So, but uh, we should also remember that we are dealing with microorganisms, and so we don't dictate, you know, how long it takes for them to grow or how long it will give us the chance to uh, detect or identify their presence. So it's only when something is growing that you now take um, further action or you need to take. But one thing that I want to highlight is the relationship between the wards, the clinics, and the lab. It's supposed to be a two-way traffic, even though the culture is not as good. Just the same way that we have a problem with requests for culture. I would have loved to have one additional slide to show you know, the number of cultural requests from our different wards compared to the number of discharges, which we actually do on a monthly basis as part of our surveillance for healthcare associated infections. And why we started that was basically when we noticed that we keep talking, talking and trying to sensitize, but people don't understand. So we needed to have something, you know, to uh, rely on. And that's why we said, okay, while we are taking the protein surveillance data, we should equally now note and compare the number of admissions or number of discharges as against the number of cultural requests. How, what, what, what are we trying to achieve here is that most 